This is a Geo podcast. Okay, can you start <laughs> by telling us your name and a little bit about the organization? Uh, my name is B. Anthony Holly. I'm native Detroiter, and I'm representing a couple organizations. One is the Conscious Community Cooperative Think Tank, which is a self-sufficiency org for people of African descent, um, and the Technical Assistance that provides a technical assistance organization called the Cooperation Group that provides uh, community uh, support for business development and education around cooperatives. And then uh, we also we also co-founded a uh, community loan fund called the Detroit Community Wealth Fund. It's a part of this national peer network that uh, is facilitated by the working world. Okay, what's the best part of being part of all of that work? Um, meeting more and more people of color that are excited about this work and that know that uh, our people have been doing this work for eons and um, just uplifting stories of uh, melanated greatness and excellence and how that overlaps with cooperative economics, how that overlaps with governance and shared decision making, how that overlaps with um, uh, liberation, co-liberation. What's the most difficult part of doing that work? Uh, I would say where do I start? Capacity. Uh, capacity and um, being resourced to be able to do the work. Uh, it's a big barrier, especially in Detroit, where um, the cooperative ecosystem is young and very much budding, but still very much a need for support for not only people on the ground that want support developing their ideas, but for the developers to actually have support. And uh, some of that comes from policy, some of that comes from more people knowing it cooperatives are an option and they're not just some hippie white thing but it's something that black people have been doing it for a while and they are not always calling it a cooperative or a business um, so just um, raising the profile and making it uh, sexy for, for um, people to be involved in this type of uh, economic democracy where do your organizations need the most support Um, I would say, and back to the resources, supporting resources for, um, like, the cooperation group, we've been doing some some great work around education, and uh, collectively, a lot of the orgs in Detroit have been working together on a coalition that's really new called the Coalition for Economic Democracy, but it's a pretty common thread that just our organizations are underfunded under under resource to be able to provide for the real need in Detroit um, and Detroit really is set up to be um, a mecca or model for uh, a, a great place for cooperatives that are so relevant especially since it's the largest population of people of African descent this side of this side of the, the Atlantic Ocean so I would say um, uh, more resources, you know, uh, funding, and also uh, getting the local policy makers and lawmakers on board. Which now we have this Main Street, um, uh, Main Street uh, co-op law that's come into place. So hopefully, some things will be moving, and we'll continue our advocacy and uh, education. So, yeah, I think you know nothing that's too uncommon, but just like, you know, under-resourcing of our organizations and, you know, just all of the work that needs to be done yesterday and, you know, just feeling like, you, you know, you got to, we have to step up and, and do it and envision a way for this to be sustainable moving forward, so. Okay, and the last question is, what are your wildest dreams for the cooperative movement? Um... I'm really happy to see more people of color in leadership. Uh, I, I, I've seen a great uh, increase in the number of people of color since 2014, my first one. So uh, owning as a movement that these, this work that we're doing is um, in a larger frame of transitioning from 
um, the broken economy to a more just and transformative economy, and that co-ops are just one part of that. And envisioning um, people of color at the center of that, and I think that our movement is moving in that direction and just needs some more, um, yeah, more, more support and more people like us, like you, uh, uplifting matters that, that, that are most relevant to people of color. I think we need more relevant outreach materials, culturally appropriate outreach materials for those people that have been underrepresented. And um, yeah, I think. Well, like, let's say all of those things happened. Uh huh. Like all of those things came to fruition. Mm -hmm. Like if the world was your oyster sort of thing, like mm -hmm. what would it look like? Like what would the cooperative movement look like? It would look like community wealth being back in the hands of people who have been disenfranchised for generations. I, I would say um, black-owned uh, cooperative grocery stores, black-owned cooperative uh, credit union, black-owned cooperative landscaping, construction, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that we need, recycling, all the things that we need for our self-sufficiency, um, using co-ops as a tool, a vehicle for economic democracy. So, um, yeah, liberation. Honestly, that just this the co the co creation and co liberation of our of our people is what uh, what um, I think we have is definitely what we have at stake and what we have to gain. So, Thank you for listening. Check us out at geo.coop.